afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit. You're here at the Technical Forum, and I invite all of you who are around to grab a seat, enjoy uh, after lunch coffee, wake up a tiny bit, or some juice and water while we enjoy our next presentation. Our next topic is the Nell Hydrogen Station, a sustainable hydrogen business for cars and heavy duty vehicles. And here to speak with us today from Nell Hydrogen is the Vice President of Technology, Dr. Ufa Borup. Please join me while giving him a warm welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, I'm excited to be here to tell you about what we do at Nell and, um, and the new H2 station. And, um, and how we can build some sustainable business around this uh, in the future. Um, basically, from the side, we are involved in the entire uh, value chain of, uh, of hydrogen, from hydrogen production equipment, storage systems, the station, dispensing all the way to the vehicle. So we basically want to work together with our customers and clients to optimize this system. So we're quite flexible in terms of which part you, uh, you can involve us in, uh, but we do have strong competence all the way, also including uh, the surveillance system where we are monitoring the systems 24-7. Uh, um, we have worked, we are working exclusively with hydrogen in, uh, in Nell Hydrogen and uh, th this is uh, close to our heart and, and, um, and we really put our effort into to optimizing the entire chain of the system. Um, if you look at our new H2 station, um, this is basically a, a redesign of uh, what was launched uh, three years ago. The big change now is that we have developed, uh, we spent five years developing um, a new compressor head, which is a ground up development from, from a, a white piece of paper where we are utilizing all the knowledge we have about hydrogen fueling. So this compressor here, head here is not optimized to run continuously uh, 24 7 it's really optimized for starts and stops it's optimized for variable speed uh, it's optimized to uh, to have no hydrogen liquid leakage so you don't so ba basically you can start up with back pressure on it so no hyd hydrogen will be vented during the operation of this uh, of this compressor head and um, and we act we have it uh, have it running for over 5,000 hours without any maintenance on it so it means you can really use this uh, uh, as a really good uh, heart of the hydrogen station. This is the most critical aspect of a hydrogen uh, compression station, is to have this uh, compression head work uh, flawlessly. So this also means that actually we are able to uh, improve the performance of the entire station. Uh, so we can now have uh, up to 45 refuelings of cars within 12 hours. And, um, and there's also a version which can be equipped for heavy duty vehicles, a 350 bar. And in that case, actually, we can do up to 1,000 kilogram fueling per day. So, so this is actually a, a big step forward in terms of capacity and reliability on the, on the station. Um, you can see some of the characteristics here. Uh, so, so we really have low, high efficiency with really low power consumption. Uh, for the head, and this also leads to really, even when we run it really, really hard, the output temperature on the hydrogen is also much lower than what you see in, uh, in conventional uh, compression. Um, another great uh, aspect that we achieved here within the last month is that we now have a UL listing uh, on the H2 station. So that means that uh, actually we went through a two-year process with UL to check all the safety and critical aspects of the station. So now uh, the station will come with a UL listing from the factory, uh, which actually eases up the installation process a lot. So this is the first hydrogen fueling station with this uh, certification. And it, it means that probably we can shorten down the, the, com the commissioning and the installation time uh, with a matter of months and, and it's really important for us to start scale up uh, the, the, the implementation of the stations. Uh, so, it's, so it's really based on all the, the knowledge we have from, from the, our activities in all the different countries. We're trying to, to gather that together and build that into our safety uh, design of the station. So, um, 
So it, it will become much, uh, much faster to, to, to get through the permitting on the site. And, and basically you have much, uh, much lower project risk when you build these stations. Of course, these uh, experiences we are, we are taking around from the different uh, um, regions. So also we are trying to align and influence these regulations so we get, uh, let's say, a little bit more uh, the same regulation in the different, different re regions. Today it is quite complicated to work as a global company with the same product because there is, there's still a lot of difference in, in terms of what is required in Asia and in US and Europe. Um, yeah, so uh, on, the, on the H2 station, basically 1,000 kilogram a day for, uh, for buses, for example, and also we have now a really large range for inlet pressure so that you can, we can configure the, the station with any kind of supply whether it's a high pressure uh, distribution where you come in with the trailers and park them next to the station or you have on-site production, we can work uh, with all these, um, with these methods of, of uh, production. So basically, the way we analyze this is that we look at the entire chain and, and really to make this sustainable, not only from an environmental perspective, but also from a business perspective, we need to get quite low on the hydrogen price this is much lower than what you see on the stations today. Today, maybe you're paying 10 euro or more on the station, but this is not really sustainable business-wise. So to really get into these areas where we can run buses and trucks, we need to get, need to get the price lower. And actually, to, to, uh, in order to achieve this, we need to look at the entire chain all the way back to the production of the energy. So, um, so I think at the moment, the, the, the method we favor is this distribution model where, where you optimize the distribution and actually it is possible in the best, uh, best location to get to a five, uh, five euro per kilogram uh, situation. So, uh, so um, this, will, this is not possible everywhere, but we, we do see uh, this possible in, uh, in some areas where you include everything and, and still are competitive. Uh, it's, it's a lot about scaling and one of the things is, uh, if you look at the electrolyzer, it's instead of just building the electrolyzer to produce hydrogen, you have to think about it in a, in a sector coupling manner where we utilize the different elements. So of course, if you can use uh, oxygen for a purpose, that can provide some value to your business case. Uh, in some areas, there's district heating systems available where you can uh, deliver the, the, the cooling or the, the off heat of the electrolyzer, that can also help in the business case. And then of course, it's about understanding what you can do on the electric system. Can you sell some additional services for, for balancing? Uh, can you work uh, with a variable pricing on the, on the, so when the wind, when there's a lot of renewables in the grid, that we actually operate the electrolyzer there. So a lot of optimization goes into this. And of course, also on the, on the supply, on the, on the customer side, Try to uh, try to build different kind of customers into the to, into the scenario. So we're not only f targeting uh, the mobility sector, but it could be that we put it together with a methanization, gas rejection, or or even a refinery, where we, we have a, a need for additional hydrogen. It can be a base customer for the business case, and then we can start adding this mobility sector on top. Um, so these are some of the things we are working on at the moment. This is a, it's a lot of wobbly graph here, but this is electricity price in Denmark uh, over the last three years. And actually what we can see here is on the duration curve is that when you have a country where, or a system where you have a lot of renewable penetration, the price starts to, uh, to, uh, to go down because, I mean, the wind turbines, they run anyway, so they will produce no matter what the price is. So actually we can start to see here that that we have thousands of hours now where the, the price is really suppressed. And this is really an interesting case for the electrolyzer. And, and if we don't add the electrolyzers, actually, you know, the projections is that it will go even further down when we get to, uh, to really high penetration of renewables. So there's really a sweet spot for electrolyzers to operate maybe here or maybe we can even extend up to 60-70% have a high, high percentage of, of uh, green electricity to produce hydrogen. Um, 
and also still have really attractive, uh, let's say, uh, pricing, which uh, where you can see in the Danish system, actually we are below two, uh, 20 euro per megawatt hour. It's really competitive also even uh, to natural gas. So, uh, so there is a way forward. This is not in all markets, but we do see that when you add a lot of renewables to the grid, you start to see this situation and it will open up business, uh, business cases for, for hydrogen. Um, yeah, t time is running. So, uh, so basically the way we then model it together with the mo mobility sector is uh, to have a centralized production. This is really important because you have to pay for, to, for the grid connection. Uh, there's a lot of fees and, and project fees to get the project established. You need to scale up to a certain size. And we see a sweet spot, it's starting off around eight ton of hydrogen per day. Uh, where you actually get good economy, uh, econ economy of scale in the, in the production side. So it becomes these uh, production hubs, and then you distribute hydrogen from there. Um, of course, if you can use it locally, that's, uh, that's ideal. But otherwise, it is possible to transport the hydrogen in, uh, with high pressure uh, distribution. And actually, the high pressure distribution is quite attractive. If you look at, for example, bus depots, very uh, very limited space on the depot. It's it's hard to bring the power in in any other way uh, to the depot. So having this uh, high pressure distribution is something that really is uh, attractive for for a bus uh, application. Um, so if we look at uh, at the bus sector, we worked a lot with uh, with buses. So if, if you're only bringing out a small fleet of ten buses, it's not really possible to get to five euro. It's there's too much. Uh, cost around the system to, to get there, and there's too little hydrogen to work with. It gets better with 50 buses, and I think around 100 buses in the best location. Actually, we can see that this is, uh, this is achievable. Um, also, uh, if you go further up in scale, we are working with, uh, with Nikola Motors to build uh, a station which starts at 8 ton a day. Uh, so actually here you have so much scale that it does make sense to produce it on site. Uh, because you can choose the location where you have access to electricity and, and the highway system. So, um, so uh, this is a really interesting project. We're talking about transferring two to three megawatt hour into the vehicle in a matter of minutes. So it's really, uh, in that sense, very powerful transfer of energy that, that will be done. And, uh, and of course, uh, the supply side of that is to optimize everything from, uh, from, the, from the power production to the storage, to the dispensing and the compression to make sure that we get a flawless system operating with, uh, with these trucks. Um, and the, the system we are working on is actually something which can scale up to around uh, 32 ton a day uh, capacity, which, uh, which is around 500 truck fuelings uh, per day. So that was, uh, that was a short introduction to, uh, to NEL uh, Hydrogen and, uh, and what we're working on in, in the mobility sector and how we see this uh, to become more sustainable in the future. And uh, we're happy to take some questions or, or discussions later on. We, are, we have a booth down here in the, in the hallways. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Borup. That was a great, uh, great introduction to what Nell is doing right now. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? I can bring the microphone down so that we can all hear what you might have to say. All right. Well, while you think on that, um, you mentioned that one of the uh, really important facts would be getting the hydrogen cost below five euros um, per kilogram. Kilogram, yeah. Kilogram, right. Um, and it, part of that was optimizing the... Um, the entire production chain. So some of that was, of course, just having a greater volume of hydrogen. Is there anything else that can be done to lower the costs? Uh, certainly the scale and optimization of the entire chain is, is the most important aspects. And then, of course, it is the cost of the electricity, which is uh, the key factor for the chain. So, um, so of course, there is uh, the electricity price, and then there's the capex of the entire system. We have to work with both of these elements to, uh, to get to get it done. Right, it's always a little bit of a balance of what you can do. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so there's a question over here, I'll be right over. Uh, my name is Ken Tauka from Welcome Inc. 
Uh, go back to the first page that you mentioned about the uh, the cooling for the uh, your 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 hydrogen. Uh, no, no, <laughs> one more. Uh, that one. So, how do you cool it down? You go to the minus forty C. Do you have any t special technology to do that? Yes, uh, the, it is a uh, it is an L developed technology. We use uh, CO two as a cooling medium, and have a very uh, compact he heat exchanger where we. So basically, the cooling compressor is working more or less continuously. And then we are storing up in cold energy below minus forty, and then basically we flush the hydrogen through this cooling reservoir with the CO two cooling. So. Uh, so that's really efficient. And of course, we can also, depending on which temperature we want to end up with, for, for heavy duty vehicles, we don't need minus 40. We, we maybe need minus 10 or minus 20. And then we will do some mixing of the hydrogen. So, um, okay, great. Come, come over, we can, uh, we can explain you more. Yeah, um, so thank you for that answer. And if there are any more questions or further discussion, um, you can find Dr. Borup at the Nell Hydrogen um, booth, which is B60. Um, and you're here for the rest of the week at the fair? Uh, or yes. someone from your yeah. company? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so head on over to B60 uh, for further discussion. Thank you so much for your attention, and thanks once again for your presentation. You're welcome. At this point, I'd just like to say that in another about one or two minutes, we'll be starting our next presentation. Uh, we're looking at energy independence in private homes achieved by the combination of storage technologies. So stay tuned for that, and we'll be back in just a few moments.